In 1909, this man, Harry Edmonds, had a dream. With the help of the Cleveland Dodge family, he started a club for international students. In 1920, he approached John D. Rockefeller, Jr. to help realize his dream of a permanent home for the group. And in 1924, International House opened its doors. For nearly 90 years, some leading figures of the last century have chaired the board of International House. In 1997, the three most recent chairmen, Henry Kissinger, Gerald Ford, and John C. Whitehead, were joined by David Rockefeller to approach a new chair to lead the I-House board into the 21st century. In June 1998, Paul A. Volcker, former chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, was elected the 11th chairman of International House. That fall, the new chairman was welcomed at a cocktail party hosted by Paul and Daisy Soros, and by John Whitehead, Don Cuneo, and Bill Rickert at the Welcome Sunday Supper at I House. That October, he chaired his first board meeting. Perhaps he's smiling because he thinks he's only signed on for a single five-year term. The chairman arrived as I House began observing its 75th anniversary. It was a year of celebrations and special events, including a gala at the Plaza Hotel and a series of programs, including one with Henry Kissinger. The year concluded with a visit by Nelson Mandela as the first David Rockefeller International Visitor. For all who participated, it was one of the great events in the history of I House. There would be many other distinguished visitors to I House during the Volcker Rule, many invited by the chairman himself. Richard Holbrook, Madeleine Albright, George Mitchell, Mary Robinson, James Turley of Ernst & Young, and his former protege from the Federal Reserve, Donald Cohn. The early years of the Volcker Rule at I House were momentous as the House embarked on a $23 million capital campaign. The chairman, here with Happy Rockefeller, hosted the kickoff gala in 2000 and attended numerous events. In the midst of the campaign came 9-11. Less than two weeks after the attacks, with trustee Frank Wisner, the chairman addressed the Welcome Sunday Supper and offered reassurance to the I-House community in a troubled time. That same fall came another momentous occasion when trustee Abby O'Neill retired from the board after 43 years of service. The chairman, along with Peter O'Neill and David Rockefeller, led the trustees in giving her a proper send-off. As we all know, the chairman is a man of stature in many ways. He's usually the tallest person in the room, but adjusts his posture depending upon the situation or individual. He's always deferential to the ladies, especially trustees and alumni. And that when it comes to an old friend like Catherine Davis, he displays true courtliness. Some have come close on the staff and on the board, but after a decade, it took a German bank president to slightly surpass the peak. The role of chairman involves many duties, addressing donors, presenting awards, presiding over dedications such as the Soros Room in 2005, the Lee Sing Tea Reading Room in 2007, the Abbey O'Neill Patio in 2008, the Century of Welcome Celebration in 2009, the rededication of Davis Hall in 2010. Of course, the chief responsibility is chairing board meetings. In this capacity, the chairman has been very detail-oriented, often asking questions and follow-up questions. The prospect of this possibility and a fear of being on the receiving end of the look kept committee chairs on their toes. But both inside and outside the boardroom, he has been low-key, conversant, and collegial. Each year, iHouse hosts a fundraising benefit, and the chairman has not missed one. From silent auctions, here with Anka at Christie's, to panel discussions, often involving trustee Fareed Zakaria, he has always been front and center. 
For years, the Harry Edmonds Awards Gala was held at the Rainbow Room, high above Rockefeller Center. The chairman played a major role in each of these events. Here he is with 2007 honorees, including Kenneth and Patricia Taylor, Sigador Helgeson, and James Press of Toyota. And with fellow honorees when he himself was honored in 2009, alumnus Ibrahim Gambari, trustee John French, and Sinichi Hirobayashi of Mitsui USA Foundation. In subsequent years, he presented awards to, among others, Hank Greenberg and Jeet Anand Kempka. This May, at the St. Regis, here with event co-chairs Adam Quinton and Bill Rickert, the chairman presented the award to iHouse alumnus James Gorman. Of all the gala dinners, few would deny that the most memorable occurred at the Rockefeller Estate in 2010. On that occasion gathered the biggest stars in the firmament of iHouse leadership. It was an assemblage rivaled only by one that David Rockefeller also hosted 60 years earlier, when Bernard Baruch, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Chairman George C. Marshall, John Foster Dulles, and other luminaries gathered in support of International House. Beyond his leadership of the board, Paul Volcker has brought a distinctly human touch to his role. He has always been most engaged with iHouse residents themselves, whether at trustee receptions and speaker events, or at Sunday suppers, after which he was invariably approached by admirers and amateur photographers. Residents and alumni alike have found him friendly and approachable, interested in their lives and what they have to say. And reassuring, during the 2008 global financial crisis and shortly after being appointed to an advisory post by President Obama, the chairman returned for a Sunday supper just as he had after 9-11. Once again, he offered reassurance and his own unique perspective, grounded in reality but tinged with hope. Last fall, after hosting the McCloy program, he stopped by HR Commons to say hello to the surprise and delight of residents studying. It was a typical gesture of the type that will be greatly missed. And so as Paul Volcker steps down, we hail his leadership, his integrity, his down-to-earth style, and his many contributions to the growth and success of the International House mission. And we say not farewell, but au revoir. We will see you again. But in the meantime, for all you have done, Thank you, Mr. Chairman.